Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we are going to be taking a look at the chord stamp tool inside of FL Studio and how you can quickly write chords with this tool. So let's go ahead, let's just start off here by first, let's just show you where it is. So this is the chord stamp tool up here, and you click it, and it gives you sets of notes that you can choose to use uh, very quickly. So let's say, for example, I want a minor chord. So I select minor and I click and it places down a minor chord. Now these, these notes are grouped, so if I move them, they all move together. So let's say that you've got a rhythm figured out. Like let's say that I wanna do something like this. Let's say that that's the rhythm that I want, but now I wanna change one of the notes. Maybe I wanna change this G to be a different note. Well, if I try that, it's gonna move them all. So what you can do is you can ungroup the note by hitting Alt G. And so we just do that. Let's say I want it to be a A flat. And then let's say, okay, let's continue on. Instead of uh, cloning though, maybe instead we will do a seventh chord. Why not? Let's go for a minor seven. And from C, let's go to uh, G minor seven. Why not? That could be interesting. We'll keep the same pattern. And I'm holding shift and then I click and drag. And that's how I'm cloning notes quickly. And let's say, okay, I like this uh, repeating thing, but over here, instead of G minor seven, let's go for a suspended chord, should we? Yes, we should. <laughs> I'm clicking all the wrong tools. Stamp tool is this one over here that looks like a little stamp. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna choose a, uh, why not, sus two. So let's go over here, let's again keep it on the G, and then let's go up to a sus four, why not? And then we'll go back down to a sus2. And then I kind of want to keep the seven here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these notes, but notice how it selects them all. I'm just going to hit Alt G to ungroup them. I'm just going to steal the sevens. And then maybe right here, uh, let's try, let's go ahead, let's, let's give it the third. We're gonna hit Alt G, let's drag it up. And then on this one too, I've changed my mind, so I'm gonna hit Alt G, I'm gonna move this up to the third. So we'll keep the sus here, but that's it. So, okay, there we go. We've got a progression. We're jamming now. We've got a rhythm. Let's go. Let's do another one. Uh, let's do it on a separate pattern. Why not? We'll keep this one around. So we come in. By the way, I'm using Piano Mix on Flex. It's in the pack Essential Pianos, if you want to follow along. And we're going to come in here. And let's choose the stamp tool again. This time, let's go for just your regular old minor chord. And we'll choose, in this case, we'll go C minor again. Why not? And we'll go for a minor four. So we'll put a four up. And, okay, so I'm using, <laughs> I'm using theory. And I know some of you aren't the strongest with theory. So what you can do is you can choose a scale. So you can choose the minor harmonic scale. You see right here it says melodic scales. And if you're going to work in the minor key, in a minor mode, there's, there's three of them then I recommend using harmonic minor for reasons that are theoretical, theory, music theory reasons. But you can see your scale right here, and the first note is C, so that's why I chose a C minor. My second note is F, and I chose F minor. Now, the minor or major you pick also comes from here. If you want to stay what's called diatonic, you're going to pick notes that only appear in the scale. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just let your ear guide you when you're starting out. And uh, you can get familiar with the chords that are diatonic to it uh, as you get better with music theory. For now, you can just go with the stamp tool and put things in. That's what makes the stamp cool kind of cool. You can just try stuff out, see what you like and don't like. So, okay, we've got a 1-4. Let's go for a 2 and then a 5. So I'm going go to I'm gonna go ahead and choose another minor. And then the fifth chord will make major. Why not? So the two is D, and then the fifth note, one, two, three, four, five, is G. So we're going to put down a G. And so there you go. 
Now, someone in the comments will probably mention, but there is scale highlighting. So you see how some of these notes are darker. You can change this by going to the helpers and then scale highlighting. And you can choose it to be uh, minor harmonic, and then you can choose the note. However, this throws me off hard because I actually play piano and I, I this is very helpful for me knowing where I am on the piano roll without having to look all the way over on the side. So I leave the scale highlighting alone and I just let it highlight the black keys because I play piano. But you may find that tool very useful. Instead of using the stamp tool, you could just have it like permanently built in. So anyways, we have our chords and let's just go ahead and extend them out and we've got ourselves a really basic progression. Now, something that we may want to try out is let's go ahead and ungroup them all. And we just use that to get our skeleton. And let's go ahead and say, okay, well, let's do some better voice leading. So voice leading is how one note goes to the next note. So if we were to look at this, this C going to the F, that's a pretty big jump. Uh, but with, with the lowest note, you can have big jumps. Generally, okay, bass, bass notes can make large leaps and it's not a big deal. But like, look at this, this is jumping up to here. That's kind of a big deal. Like that's a, and then this is going all the way up to here. It's very blocky. So a very simplistic way of doing things and sort of fixing it is just to bring notes up or down an octave, which keeps them the same note, but they just move around. You know, right, if we went up an octave, you can hold control and push up on the keyboard. You could try out different octaves. So you notice this just looks smoother. So we could go with that. This looks pretty smooth already. And then we could try moving this one down and boom, we've already got a much smoother looking progression. And we go ahead, we just play this. And then right here, listening to this, there's like a natural phrase that comes out. We could clone it. And I, you just select the notes by holding control, click drag, and then shift click drag. We'll clone the notes. And if you want to, I believe in order to move up, yeah, in order to move up and down while you're holding down the mouse, you need to let go of shift. Then you can go up and down. Okay, so over here we could say, okay, well, this is kind of cool. I want to change this chord right here to something different. Maybe we bring that note down. And then this right here wants to resolve to a C. This is where if you know a little bit of music theory, you could create some stuff pretty quickly with this. And then, you know, we could go and we could develop it further and it's really easy to pick new chords and try things out. And so there's how I like to use the chord stamp tool. It's really handy when you just want to try out different chords. Like let's say, okay, well, we've got the one and then over here, we went with the four chord. Let's say that, well, let's not try the four chord. Let's try a different chord. Let's go to the, the six. Now in the harmonic minor, it's going to be a major six. And so we're going to go ahead and choose a major. And we're going to choose a flat, which is this one. It's a little low, we'll bring it up an octave. And then we'll ungroup it. So we'll hit Alt G. We'll hold control down to move these closer so that the voicing's a bit better. We'll move it in so we could try out, hey, what does this one sound like? And then right here you say, well, instead of the chord we have there, let's go with a minor four. Uh, that'll be a little bit smoother. So we'll go with minor, which we'll is the four chord. I'll hit Alt G to ungroup them and I'll move this note down. And then here, uh, so when you have a leading tone, okay, so the five chord is a special chord because it has a leading tone in it that wants to push to the next chord. Uh, in this case, we frustrated the leading tone. Uh, we really made it angry <laughs> because there's it wants to go up to this C, which is what I do over here. So what we could do is we could just resolve that and it'll sound quite a bit smoother. And then here we could continue on with this progression. We could have the C, but or we could pick one of these notes to sort of go on and go to an F and then a G sharp, and then a B, or in this case, we don't have a B, we're at a, I wanted a G sharp. We could go G, and then this, this would create a new problem, but you can begin to develop higher voices.
you know, so on and so forth, you get going. If you know music theory, this is great because you could just get skeletons super quick and then and move forward and begin to adjust notes and move them around. Uh, if you don't know music theory, this is fantastic because then you could just, you know, experiment and try out different chords. At the beginning, you're probably going to have stuff look kind of blocky. Try and smooth it out. Try and look at how one note goes to another note and see how they're connected. Uh, this will honestly take you so far. You, you have no idea how important this is. Like, this is what makes it sound smooth. Uh, just having the chords isn't enough. You got to have the chords. You got to have the good voice leading, which is you, you treat each line like its own little voice. And how would it sound if you were to sing it? How would all the voices flow to the next note? And when you do that, you look at the chord, but you also look at like each individual note and how these how different lines might move. And it just helps your music come together a lot better. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day. Okay.